Whatever you do in faith has to be done in the revelation and understanding of the life, the nature, and the testimony of the New Testament and the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He, singular, that believeth on me, the works, plural, that I do, shall he do also, and greater works, plural, then this shall he, singular, do, because I go to the Father. It means he's talking about one individual who believes on Christ. But you see, many people say greater eh, and insist on greater without the appreciation of the works he did. He has drawn two blocks here. He says, the works that I have done, you shall do also. And then he says, and greater works shall you do. So before we even go into the greater works, first go and understand what was upon me. The things that I did. When you understand the things that I did, then let's discuss the greater. Mark 5, 25. He says, a certain woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came into press behind him and touched his garment. And she said to herself, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. The Bible says straight away when she touched Jesus Christ, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She said, If only I can touch. Meaning that that was my understanding of faith. She has faith. That if she comes in contact with this power, she would be made whole. But this was the operation of faith on the Son of God who was not limited in the anointing. That means he was available for man to have whatever they wanted. Men could only reach out according to their level of faith. I want you to see how much anointing was on this man. In Matthew chapter 14, the Bible says they were gone over and they came into the land of Gennesaret. When the men of that place had the knowledge of him, the Bible says they sent out in all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. And the Bible says, and they besought him that only touch the hem of his garment. Again, you see, they are saying, we know you're able, but this is the way we want you to do it. And as many, the Bible says, as touched him, they were made perfectly whole. They were dealing with a man whose anointing was immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness. They were all perfectly made whole, perfectly, nothing missing. And this happened under one man. And he says, the works that I have done, whosoever believes, and he didn't say the apostle who believes. He did not say the prophet who believes. He did not say the pastor who believes, the evangelist who believes. He did not say the special man of God, the consecrated one who believes. He says, whoever believeth on me, the works that I have done, you shall do. And now imagine greater works also. And that is what he has promised in Ephesians. That you can know the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing of greatness of his power in us and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. He said the words. He has given us the guarantee that he that speaketh the words of God. He says to him is an anointing beyond measure. That means the influence on your life will be so impeccable that long way before you're gone something will be written about you in the book of acts chapter 5 this is peter's time they started to teach the word and believers were the more added to the lord multitudes both men and women and in so much the bible says that they brought the sick laid them on beds and coaches that at least every shadow that touches the person the bible says they were healed they were made whole you remember the, the other woman if i can only remember 
the healing of the people in the country of Gennesaret if only here if at least because it's not limited on the shadow but it is limited on how much the man is ready to receive and understand and know this was a man Peter who had understood that when Jesus said that these works you shall do and more he believed it the Bible says, and then God wrought special miracles by Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and diseases departed from them, and them that had evil spirits went out. That means if you're dealing with Paul, somebody just needed to put a hanky on Paul, and then go on somebody who is demon possessed, and just do this. This. He just finds somebody possessed with devils, and then does this. A demon would not stand the anointing of an apron or handkerchief that touched Paul. Because he realized maybe I just need to lay hands on these hankies and let them put them on the sick. And the sick were healed. Perfectly made whole. Demons would obey on anything that touched this man. This is Paul. And God is telling you that is just an example. Imagine greater. We are getting to a level where we can no longer be afraid of the power. We cannot be afraid of the anointing. We cannot continue acting like the anointing is not present. If you choose to believe, this is inevitable. It's unavoidable. We can't run away from it. That's the responsibility of the freedom and the liberty of the spirit. In the time of Paul, there was a necessity for a certain teaching. And out of that, then the special miracles came. It means we cannot run away from knowledge. We cannot run away from revelation. That's why when I'm reading my Bible, I read the Bible to get that thing. There is something. If a whole country could be healed, and then it says, greater work shall you do. We can't run away from that liberty. The law of association is a very powerful principle in the understanding of the realm of faith. If a hunky could be associated with a man and it carries life, how many things associated with us have power by faith to do the most unbelievable miracles in the lives of men because we chose to believe? How can we die ordinary men? Narrow. Make manifest.